All right, we are now recording. Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Jensen, broker owner of Luna Realty Belize here in Belize. Specifically, I'm based on Ambergris Key. And today we are going to be highlighting one of my favorite sessions. It really is a Belize 101 real estate for foreigners who are looking to own property here in country. Now, it may be your first time looking at real estate here. You may already have property in the country and Maybe you're just trying to get caught up on the latest happening within Belize, and we are going to cover quite a bit here. As I mentioned to the folks who are on just a little bit earlier, this is going to be about an hour session. Feel free to type your questions into the Q&A section as they pop up. We are going to go through questions at the end, but in the meantime, feel free to, uh, to type those in there. So with that, we're going to get started. As mentioned, my name is Rachel Jensen. I am the broker owner of, of Luna Realty Belize here on Ambergris Key. And I also sit on the board for the Real Estate Association here, BNAR. Um, I am an IRM member, which is an inter international realtor member with NAR. And I'm very familiar with, uh, with NAR, the NAR, all the associations and whatnot. But I'm originally from New York and I made my, my way down to Belize in 2012 for the very first time. I was really not sure where I was going when I hopped on that plane. I came down for work purposes. And I just remember Googling Belize prior to coming down. And I was like, oh, this place looks absolutely beautiful. And we ended up landing in Belize City, took the puddle jumper over to Ambergris Key. And since then I was hooked on this island here. And I was not living on the island at that time. I was coming back and forth for work. And I realized that my trips here started to become more frequent and started to become longer some of it for work purposes, but also just because I really, really enjoyed it here. And so now this is home. I do live here full time. I ended up moving, I was in Nicaragua prior to this, I ended up moving here to Belize full time. And this really is where I spend all of my time here on the island. And so for those of you who are just getting to know about the country, about what it's like to move abroad or just go through that process, feel free to let me know. I'm always happy to go through questions and explain to you what it's like to go through that process. All right, so we have a few polls throughout the session. The polls are gonna pop up here on the screen, but I am curious to get to know you, learn a little bit more about you as well. So the first question that pops up here is, have you been to Belize yet? Feel free to answer that question. It should take you just a minute. There's no uh, wrong answer here, just whether or not you've been, I'll give you just a, uh, another 10, 10 seconds or so to get that answered. All right, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, perfect. So it looks like actually a majority of people here have been to Belize over half the group. Um, some have not, but others who have not are planning to come soon. So awesome. I'm always happy to, uh, to see that. Obviously, there's going to be a ton of great information that we share with you in this presentation here. We're going to go through the different districts. Maybe you already know where you want to go. Maybe you have no idea and that's what you're exploring here but we are going to go through quite a bit in our session. So our quick recap of what we'll be discussing is one is a quick Belize review. Uh, number two is we're gonna be debunking five Belize market myths. This is really important because especially for if you're a foreign buyer, there are certain things that we think we know about the market here that just aren't quite accurate. So we're gonna review those. We're gonna go through the six top spots to explore. And then we're going to have that Q and A session at the end and have that open forum. So. With that, we're gonna get started. So just a couple of quick stats, and sorry, I think my picture there is, is covering it, but population of Belize is small, it's about 400,000. The country is about the size of Massachusetts in terms of actual size. Population is very small at about 400,000. English is the official language here. It's one of the big reasons why people tend to buy real estate here because they can read through the paperwork, they understand what locals are saying to them, and it just makes it a lot more of a comfortable environment. GDP is uh, about 1.760 million. And then currency is the Belize dollar. We are pegged to the US dollar. So two Belize dollars to one US dollar. So whenever you're here in the grocery store, if you see a carton of eggs, for example, for 10 Belize dollars, cut that in half and you're at five US dollars. So if anybody is curious in the costs here and whatnot, I do have an article that is fully um, based on what costs are here in Belize and specifically on the island. Just feel free to reach out to me at any point, info at Luna Realty Belize. You stand in the corner there. I'm trying to get that info at lunarealtybelize.com. 
feel free to use that email address if you have anything that you hear me talk about that you want more specific information about. All right, so let's go through a couple of Belize fun facts. Belize is still a fairly young country, gaining its independence in 1981 from Britain. That is the big reason we speak English here is because it was a former British colony. In addition to that, Belize is the second smallest country in Central America. The smallest country is actually El Salvador. I mentioned to you the population here is about 400,000. In El Salvador, it's about 6.5 million. So it gives you some context to for country, the size, the population, people here. There's still tons of space, tons of land here in the country. And then also Belize is the home to the second largest living reef in the world. And this is really critical because it's a big reason why people are coming down to fish and snorkel and dive because the reef here is really just spectacular. We're seeing that there's a handful of different types of foreigners who are owning real estate here in Belize. One of the big ones is people who are looking to relocate. You know, they want to move their life from location A, come down here to Belize, taking whatever they can with them. But typically, these are people who are not yet ready for retirement. They are still working. They may be looking for a business that they're trying to purchase or perhaps are working remotely or want to start a business on their own. The second group of people who are owning real estate down here are the forward-thinking investors. This is the people who see that there's tons of potential here in the country. Perhaps they're going to be land banking, so picking up land now, holding on to it, and then in the future, they will be selling it for a profit. So these are more of the investors or perhaps people who are buying real estate here with it to be a rental property and then earn the rental income from it. And then last but not least, the retirees, people who are just looking to relax on the beach, have a very low-key life and enjoy their hard-earned money that they've saved over retirement. I'm going to give you a couple of Belize market benefits, and these are really important, so do write these down. Uh, these are big reasons, critical reasons why people are deciding to own property here in Belize. Is One, as a foreigner, you do receive title to your property. This is huge. There's no lease. It's no fiat camiso like they have in Mexico. This is your land, so you get title to your land here in Belize. In addition to that, property taxes are very, very low. It's 1% of the unimproved land. So it does not matter what is built on it. It is 1% of the unimproved land. So for example, a standard lot here that's 100 by 75 feet, uh, the average annual property tax is about 45 US dollars a year. For a two bedroom, two bath, we're looking at about 500 US dollars a year. So very, very affordable. A third big benefit for you is that rental income tax is low at 1.75% of the gross. That's huge rental income taxes low at 1.75% of the gross. Number four is capital gains tax here is ideal. It's exactly what we want it to be, 0%. So obviously if you are not from Belize, I would highly recommend talking to your accountant or your CPA to see how owning rental property here would affect your taxes. But here in Belize, when you sell property, you have 0% that you owe to the government of Belize for the profit on your property. And then British common laws practice, and I do mention this because this is a very comforting fact for a lot of people, because if you're from a country where they practice common law, that means that it's a law that you're familiar with, you're comfortable with, you know, we mentioned to you that they speak English here in Belize, so it makes going through the paperwork, makes all the documentation a lot more comfortable. So I have a couple pop quizzes for you here, and what we're going to do is the first person who answers in that Q&A section is going to get a bottle of hot sauce, Marie Sharp's hot sauce. And we're going to mail it directly to your house. I'm going to jot down who the winner is. But the question is, how much is the Belizean rental income tax? How much is the Belizean rental income tax? Put that answer. We just mentioned it. Put that answer there in the Q&A section. And the first person who answers correctly, the first person who answers correctly, will get a bottle of hot sauce. Okay, so I see Deanna was our first one here. And she was correct at 1.75%. So rental income tax here in Belize is 1.75%. Deanna, I'm going to just write your name down. Also, Deanna, just shoot me an email with your, um, with your address, info at Luna Realty Belize, and we will get that over to you. And you win a bottle of hot sauce. It's some of the best hot sauce in the world. Uh, and we are going to mail it straight to you. And so, folks, we do have a couple of pop quizzes throughout the presentation here. So do make sure that you're paying attention because all of our winners will get some real prizes. All right, Deanna, and thank you everybody for participating there. But yes, Belizean rental income tax, we'll just go back to the other slide for a second, is only 1.75% of the gross, number three there. 
So it makes it ideal for people to own rental property here. All right, so we're gonna jump now into the market myths. These are really important, especially if this is your first time owning real estate here in Belize, because it is fairly different, I think, than what a lot of us perceive it to be, or perhaps what you're used to in your home country. So the first one here is talking about costs. Um, the, the reality is people think that they can get really inexpensive real estate here, the 100, 150,000 beachfront property on Hamburgers Key or in a developed place. Uh, and it's not the reality anymore. You know, 10, 15 years ago, that was possible. Now the average two bedroom cost here on Hamburgers Key specifically is $425,000. Um, Ambergris Key does tend to be the most expensive. So you're looking if you're looking in other areas, you're able to find something for less than that typically. But it's not the same place that it was 10, 15 years ago. But the plus side is it's not going to be the same place in 10, 15 years from now. So we do expect costs to continue going up um, and for real estate to continue to increase in value. So you're still coming in at a really good time. But this is an example that I wanted to show you of a beachfront property at Seeker Beach that is under contract at this point. It was listed for $450,000. So I know a lot of times people are like, oh, they hear about Secret Beach on Ambergris Key. They hear about these lots that are $45,000 and they think they're beachfront lots. They're not. Um, those are lots that are typically about two, three miles from the water. If you want beachfront, you're going to be paying more than you probably anticipate for it to be. While Belize is in Central America, yes, do note that a lot of the things that come into this country to build construction materials are imported. So number one, they're imported into Belize. Not a lot is produced in Belize. So there's the importation fees. And then if you're in the Keys, then you have the delivery fees from the mainland to the island. So you have that increased cost too. So where you do tend to find that you're saving money is on labor. You do tend to find that coastal property would probably still be, probably still be less in Belize than it is in the United States or North America, but it's not necessarily cheap, right? It's not the 50,000 or $25,000 that I know a lot of us um, would like, of course, but you know we do see with the current trends that real estate prices are just continuing to increase, especially coastal property. Now, I mentioned this earlier on in the presentation, if you would like more information about the cost of living, feel free to reach out to us. You can do info at lunarealtybelize.com or if you go to lunarealtybelize.com under the resources tab, you'll find an article there that has the cost of living and you're able to, uh, to, to request it and we'll send over a copy to you. But I just wanna make this very clear because a lot of times I'm getting people reaching out and they're looking for that dream property for $100,000 on the beach on Ambergris Key and it's just not possible these days. Now you're still able to find good value, right? But good value does not necessarily mean cheap. So I want you all to remember that as you are going through your property search here. And again, this example is specifically from Ambergris Key. Ambergris Key does tend to be more expensive than the rest of the country, but it's just good for you to see numbers and get expectations set. Myth number two is about an MLS. So there is a website called MLSAmbergrisKey.com. This actually is not a central MLS. It's a couple of real estate companies that came together and put their own listings on there. But the good news is I do sit on the board for the Real Estate Association. This is one of our big pushes to have by next year an MLS for you to be able to easily see all of the properties available. Right now, it's a scavenger hunt. You're going from one website to another. And a lot of times, the websites aren't actually updated. It'll say something's available, but it's not. Or it'll say that it's sold, but it actually has come back on the market. Or it'll give you a price that's just wrong. And so this is where it really does help to have a full-time agent who's here in the country help you with that process because we do tend to live this is we live and breathe real estate here so we know what's coming on the market we know what's on the market we know how much it's for we know how much things sold for uh, it does take a lot of work you know because you are getting to have those personal relationships and chatting with each of the agents since there is no mls even from our end but it is important for you to be working with that that right person but do know that there is an mls coming so that's at least hopeful in addition to that here, real estate agents are not licensed in Belize um, and there really is no formal training. So technically anybody that you meet can tell you they're a real estate agent here. And I guess technically they could be, right? Because that's what they proclaim themselves to be, but they may not necessarily have the sort of experience. You know, maybe they are a snowbird here and they do real estate in their home country and they think it's similar, um, which it's not, but maybe they think it is. And so I would say if you need help finding an agent, BNAR, that's the, one of the real estate associations here, Belize National Association of Real Estate. You're able to go to their website, find their agents on there. They are vetted agents. So you are able to make sure that you're working with somebody who is knowledgeable and at least has 
um, experience that they need in order to, to guide you properly. Now, again, this is something that we are working on as part of our association come January. Uh, we will be implementing licensing and testing and really what is needed in order to make consumers feel comfortable. But I'd say a lot of this comes back to you as you're getting to know your agents doing the proper due diligence. How long have you been in real estate? Do you personally own real estate? You know, if they're not from the country, do you have the proper uh, work permits that you need? Because you do need a work permit or be a resident here in order to be a real estate agent. And so if you're down here for six months out of the year, they don't tend to have those sort of, those sort of qualifications. So Again, this just comes from, from you doing a little bit more due diligence, but I do want to make sure that we do share that. All right, number four here is the titling process. So I know in many developed countries, the titling process is quick. In the States, I have some rental properties and within 30 days, we were closed, but I got the title in the mail and everything was good to go. Here in Belize, well, we're on Belize time a lot of the time, but it typically takes about 12 to 18 months to receive your physical title. So if you're somebody who is used to having something, you know, within 30 days or 60 days, that title within your hands, just note that it is going to take some time, but this is normal. This is part of the process. As you are closing on property, you will work with a closing agent or a closing attorney. They'll do a, a background or a clear title check to make sure that the title is clear. They'll let you know if there are any issues. And then from there, once both the buyer and the seller sign off on the documentation, they'll register you as the new owner with the lands department you'll receive what they call an LRS number. That LRS number you're able to track online and see where your title is at in that process of being transferred from the seller to you. So there is at least confirmation that you are the new buyer. So you at least have that peace of mind, but just again, setting expectations, going in, knowing that you're not going to receive that physical title for about 12 to 18 months. In addition to that, the titling fees are high. Um, and that is something that is important for you to be factoring into your budget. When you're looking at the real estate prices online, the listing price, they do not factor in the closing costs. So here we call it the stamp tax. That's that title transfer fee to move it from the seller to the buyer. That is something that the buyer pays. And then in addition to that, you have the closing agent fees or the attorney fees, which is about two to 3%. So I would always factor into your budget about 10 to 11% on top of that list price. And if your budget's $200,000, you probably don't want to be looking at property that's $200,000. You want to be looking in that 170 range to make sure, you know, 170, 180 to make sure that you have enough money for that closing. So that is really important for you to bear in mind. I know those fees are higher than we prefer them to be, but the good news is like we talked about before that there's low ongoing fees, the property tax, for example, if you just have a parcel of land, the typical 75 by hundred, you're looking at about 45 US dollars a year. Right, So those ongoing fees tend to be minimal, but there is that big chunk up front. So again, just setting expectations and making sure that you are prepared for it. Now, I'm not gonna go through all this. I know we don't have the time for it. This can be a whole session in itself, but if you're new to buying real estate in Belize, please request the closing checklist. This is an important part of the process for you to understand what that buying process looks like, understand the timeline, to understand the due diligence, to understand what the closing agent is doing for you to make sure that you're buying a piece of property that is a real piece of property to be sold. But just email me there, info at lunarealtybelize.com and we'd love to get you that document. All right, let's jump on to the final market myth here is infrastructure. So I think a lot of times people come from a developed country and they have the same expectations of what the infrastructure will be like in a developing country. Belize is indeed a developing country country. And it's great for you to set these expectations. If you've been here before, I know more than half of you have been here before. So that's awesome. So you probably know that there are potholes or a lot of, um, a lot of speed bumps on the road. So you have to be extra careful. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is right now. There is certainly improvement. There has been improvement over the last 10, 12 years that I've been here, but there's still a long way to go. But understand that prices are the way they are because the infrastructure isn't as developed as a developed country. So we're not Bermuda, we're not Aruba, we're not Bahamas, but also the real estate prices aren't those prices either, right? Because we understand that that's not what this market is here. It is growing. I do think as we have more flights, direct flights coming into this country, there will be a huge boom in tourism. Just today, it was announced that JetBlue is flying direct three times a week from JFK Airport in New York, which is huge. I'm from East Coast originally. So this is great for all of our East Coasters getting down here. Um, but as we find more flights like that, 
this country will become more popular. I believe, truly believe real estate prices are going to continue to go up from there. And then as there's more investment into the country, the infrastructure improves. So there may not be, and this is good for you too to know when you're buying properties, uh, when you're buying land or when you're buying a house, is there road access to get there? Um, it's not uncommon actually to buy land here where there's no road access yet. There may be easements on the surveyed map, but there's no actual physical road yet. So that's not bad for land bankers, right? I know a lot of land bankers who are like, oh, that's not really important. I'm going to hold on to the property for 20 years or 25 years. But if you want to live here, if you want to build tomorrow, then it's really important that you're able to get to your property. In addition to that, public utilities like electricity and water, uh, they are not necessarily throughout the entire country either. So you may be buying land or you may be buying a house that is going to be off-grid. If off-grid is new to you, then of course it's important for you to learn a little bit more about the off-grid uh, market, the cisterns and, and solar and all of that. But just a, a heads up there, even in the most popular places, there are no public utilities, but you just go in with that expectation, ask the question there. And I'd say really just limit buying on speculation. You know, if you've heard, I've heard for years that there's going to be an international airport here on the island. I don't believe it until I see it. And we haven't seen anything yet. So, you know, it's great that they're promising this, that it's being talked about. But until it's actually happening, don't buy something necessarily because they're promising infrastructure there. Uh, and then healthcare, this is one that comes up quite a bit. It's okay. Here on Ambergris, we have some great private clinics. On the mainland, there are some great, great private clinics as well. Uh, generally, a lot of people, if they're having bigger, bigger surgeries or more significant health issues, they'll tend to go to Guatemala or Mexico or go back to their home country in order to get those services done. So important for you to understand that too. All right, this brings us to our next poll. Let me get that up here for you. And what do you want to do with your property? Is it primarily a residential property for you? Is it going to be primarily an investment property for you? Are you looking to buy it now and live later? And maybe you'll put it in the rental market now, but you're not sure. Or are you looking to live here part-time and then rent it out the other time? I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds there because I know it takes a minute just to really think about what it is you're trying to accomplish. All right, four, three, two, one. All righty, perfect. We'll share the results here. So it looks like a majority of people are looking to live part-time and then rent it out part-time with the second leading being primarily investment and then residential buy now, live later. Okay, cool. The one thing I do want to mention about the majority here, that 41% who said live part-time, rent out part-time is understand. I have a whole another webinar on the rental markets here. I'd be happy to send that over to you. Um, if you do want to, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis though. If you do want to rent out your property and also spend time here, please understand that high season is considered middle of November through middle of May. A majority of your rental income is coming from middle of November through middle of May. So if you're planning to occupy your property during that time, understand a significant income that you could be making is going to be lost. I just like to share that because I know we like to have the best of both worlds. We like to have our property in paradise, come down, be snowbirds, get out of the cold up north. Um, but then we also want to make money from it too, but understand that beyond that season, that high season, it's considered slow season. So you may not be getting that sort of rental income, but enough there. I have sessions entirely on owning rental properties here. If that is a goal of yours, reach out. I'm happy to send you those sessions so that we can uh, get you caught up on the market here. All right, T. Now with that, we're going to jump into the top six places to explore. Belize, like I mentioned, it's about the size of Massachusetts. So it's not a big country, but each town, each neighborhood, each district is really, really different. We're going to go through six districts or six towns in different districts today. And I'm going to just give you a quick highlight. I do dig deeper into individual sessions on these places. So feel free to reach out to me there. I'd be happy to get you more specifics. If you're not sure where you want to be, fantastic. If you think you know where you want to be, still stay tuned because sometimes the country uh, surprises you and has places that you may not have considered before. So the first place that we're seeing a lot of people are owning is in Corozal. This is close to the Mexican border. Belize and Mexico has very, very friendly relations. Uh, this is a great spot for somebody who perhaps needs a little bit more medical care across the border, or perhaps you want to have access to the bigger department stores. You know, there's Home Depot up there, Walmart stores that we don't have in the States. Uh, it does tend to be a quiet fishing village. It's not as developed as the rest of the country, but does have very, very easy access to Mexico. 
The second and third top places that people are owning are the keys, Ambergris key is the little orange pin, and then Key Cocker is that green pin that you see there. These are the islands that are very popular for divers, fishermen, because the reef, if you can follow my cursor, the reef does parallel these locations over here. So it takes five, 10 minutes to go from the shore of these islands into the reef and be in the water in just no time. These are also the top two places, I'd say with Ambergris Key being the top place for tourism. And it is also the place with the largest expat population. So you tend to find here that you have more services, more restaurants, uh, more of the, the North American stuff that you may anticipate when you're moving or that you may like to see when you're moving or spending more time. But both of these are popular. Key Cocker is a much smaller version of Ambergris Key, um, but it is still quite popular. Cayo, <coughs> excuse me, this is an area that uh, has really grown over the last few years and it's well known for its jungles and farming area, very, very low farmland. There's a big Mennonite population here too, which surprises folks sometimes, but Mennonites are big in the farm industry and also in the produce industry, do great woodworking. But this is really ideal for somebody who prefers to be closer to nature, wildlife, have the rivers, go hiking right here in the Cayo district. Hopkins is the light blue pin that you see. This is an area that I see is more up and coming. Um, I, I find more people are starting to look at Hopkins than they are at compared to Placencia, but it's only about two, two and a half hours from Belize City. Belize City is the star that you see over here. And so quite quick to get to quicker than other parts of the country, but it is a quiet fishing village as well, no, well known for its Garifuna population, really good food, great live music, and just, just a beautiful spot generally. And then last but not least is Placentia. This area has been popular for expats over the last, I'd say 10, 15 years. Um, there's good reason for that. It was an older coastal fishing village that has since grown into a, a tourist hotspot, but it is smaller and more laid back than Ambergris Key. And this is about three and a half hours from Belize City. So for those of you who are looking at property from an investment perspective, it's always important to know and understand where the visitors are going. And this is an honest conversation that I like to have with investors. It's great if you, you know, were what you personally like, but when you're looking at an investment, it really, the numbers is what needs to make sense. Where are the people going? You want to go where the people are going or where the people are starting to go. And I thought this was interesting. It was just a quick pie chart of 2019 compared to 2022, uh, where the visitors were going throughout the country here. You can see, and this was, I thought, one of the most interesting points here, that Cayo, that was the area I mentioned to you, let me go back one, this Cayo district over here has been growing a lot. Cayo district went from seeing 6% of the tourism to 19% tourism in 2022. And I'd say there's a lot of good reason for that. One is especially over COVID, a lot of people realized that they were looking at more land, right? So it's drew, drawn more people there if they want more acreage, if they want farmland, if they want self-sustaining gardens or whatnot. So we've seen Cayo really shift to be a more popular spot. Key Cocker was really the, the place that took the hit there because instead of all going out to Key Cocker, where we see 31% here, there were less people going out to Key Cocker, still more-ish going out to Ambergris Key compared to 2019, but Cayo is really, really what jumped. Uh, interesting to see that Corazal fell a little bit and Placencia has stayed about the same. So good to see it's maintaining, but for those investors, look to see where the people are going, Ambergris Key, look to see where it's growing, Cayo District. Now, based on the numbers for the year to date, this actually only includes up to April. So January, February, March, April, 2023, we can see here that there was a slight decline from 2022 to 2023 so far and people coming to Ambergris Key. Um, big jump that we wanna see here is even for Cayo. So Cayo continues, continues to increase. Cayo goes from 19% to 20, 21% of visitors and then Key Cocker had a small increase there too. So good for you to note, these the numbers are all accessible through the Belize Tourism Board. You can see their little logo there on the bottom right, Belize Tourism Board. You can go to their website at any point, go to statistics, and they have all the charts and numbers and figures and occupancy at average daily rate based on district. But I wanted to give you a quick overview here. So this is good, again, for investors. See where the people going, see where is growing, right? See where there's an increase in interest because that could be good for appreciation down the line. But if you're thinking somebody, if you're somebody who's thinking living here full time, or this is really more of a lifestyle for you, these numbers don't necessarily matter as much because 
you want to go where it feels right to you, right? It's more of a heart decision. It's more of an emotional decision of where the country feels right versus where are the tourists going. All right, this brings us to the pop quiz. Again, the first person who answers in that Q&A section will win a wonderful bottle of hot sauce, Belize's famous hot sauce here. This is which location met, mentions he's the highest number of visitors, the highest number of visitors or the highest percentage of visitors. What district, well, or not district, what location? All right, I just saw a number. Oh, sorry, we just went back a little bit. All right, let me get it here. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, guys, I'm getting the... All right, Cindy, it looked like you were number one. And I'm just going to write your name down, Cindy. And yes, the answer there was Amberger's Key. Awesome. And I'm just going to go back here. See, guys, Amberger's Key does continue across the board to see the highest percentage of travelers. So awesome, Cindy. I'm just going to write down your last name there. Send me an email as well with your address, and we'll get you a delicious bottle of hot sauce. Thank you, everybody, for participating. All right, so with that, we're gonna jump into the districts here. I know that there's a ton of information, guys. This information, this is being recorded. I'm gonna send you the recording out afterwards too. And so if you have to jump at any point, that's fine. You're gonna get the recording, but I'm also happy to have conversations with you one-on-one -on -one based on the, the information and to see really what's of most interest. But we're gonna just breeze through, through these six locations here. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of some real estate that's available. So Corazol is that first, just the first, the first town we looked at that's closest to Mexico. It's about two hours from Belize City. Population is small, about 10,000 people. And it is well known because of that location, right? because it is close to Mexico. Within 15, 20 minutes, you can be at the border and you can be shopping at Home Depot if that's important to you. Also, there's a free zone here and there is a bay. So you can see in this picture over here, this is the Bay of Chetamal. So this is not the Caribbean Sea, but you still have that really beautiful blue water. So here's an example of a property that's for sale. This is a duplex, one block from the bay. So from the rooftop, you do have water views, but from the main levels, you do not. But it is a three bed, two bath on each floor. This property was built in 2012. Um, I know that the owner was doing some favors for some friends. So they're the ones who are staying there right now. So we don't really have accurate performance. I know that that's something that gets asked quite a bit, but you know, there is potential here but it is something just to give you an example of what a duplex home one block from the water would cost you in Corozal. And we do tend to see that Corozal properties are more affordable than other parts of the country, which is great because think about it, it's close to Mexico, so easy to get materials back and forth. But uh, if you're looking for something that's most cost-effective and being on the coast or being on the water, I would highly recommend Corozal. Here's some more examples. This is in Progreso. This is close to Corozal. Uh, it's about 45 minutes from Corozal and it's about five minutes from the, the small town of Progreso. But these are about acre parcels going for $95,000 each. This is within a community. So you do know that you have the infrastructure there. You have the internet and electricity hookup if you do want that. Uh, some people prefer to be off grid. So I just want to mention that too. But you can see here for the waterfront parcels, um, under $100,000 is, is quite good. You still are still able to find bargains in Corozal. If you don't necessarily want to be right on the water, you can find a parcel for $15,000 and then hold on to it or build. But of course, if you are coastal or if you are on the water, do you anticipate to pay more? But this is the lagoon um, here in that area, but Progresso is the name of the town. All right, Amber Key. And if you haven't noticed, we're going to start from north and work our way south here. So we went through Corazon, now we're gonna to go to Ambergris Key. Ambergris Key is only about 40 miles from Belize City, 15 minutes by Puddle Jumper, that's that little plane that goes back and forth, or about an hour and a half by water taxi from Belize City here. Population fluctuates during the seasons, but on average about 55,000. And the island here is really well known for the fishing, diving, snorkeling, because of the fact that we do parallel the reef. You can see here in this picture where you see those white waves breaking, that actually is the reef right there. So you are able to get out there very, very quickly. It is also a top destination for tourism. It's a very, all around the country is very safe, but here you do tend to see that people are encouraged to go out. Golf carts are used for transportation. Go check out North, go check out South and really get to get a good feel of the island. And a lot of people really enjoy that because how many times you go on vacation and you get to know your bartenders, your name and story, and the next thing you know, you're inviting them up to come visit you in the States. I mean, it happens so often here because there's a real connection, right? The service industry is very, very strong here. And there's a real connection between people who are coming down as tourists. And then that's a big reason they keep coming back and back and back. 
All right, must tries when you're here, Holchon and Shark Rally. Those are two top snorkel and dive sites here. Even if you don't dive, the snorkeling is incredible. You see tons of marine life from turtles and nurse sharks. They're harmless, I promise you. And just really, really colorful fish. It's a really spectacular place to be. Uh, there you see the turtles right over there, but Holchon and Shark Rally. And then also if you here are here, and if you do like food, I would highly recommend a What the Food Tour. This is when they go to a few different local restaurants and they introduce you to the local cuisine here. Highly recommend this tour and nothing but great reviews from it, but a good way for you to also try the local cuisine. This is one of the best examples I found for buy and hold. It is property just north of Seeker Beach and it is an, technically an island. It's called uh, Brasilet Key. But there, there's water view lots starting at 45,000 and then waterfront lots for 95,000. For those of you who were on our session earlier and we were talking about it be not, you know, not being cheap here in Belize, we saw that lot at Seeker Beach, just a few miles away, waterfront going for $450,000. So this is great for somebody who's looking to land bank, hold on to property, and over time decide if they want to sell their investment. This is another property on the lagoon going for uh, 235,000. There is 30 year financing as well, which is unheard of in this country. Uh, typically if there is financing, it's owner financing and it's up to a three or five year term, but this owner is willing to do 30 year financing. But this is located there on the lagoon about four and a half miles south. And I do find this to be an incredible value for waterfront because on the island here, prices have just skyrocketed, especially for this coastal property. Uh, in addition, here is a great tiny home option. This is a pre-construction one. There are models that are currently under construction. This is located on West Ambergris Key, about five minute boat ride from the heart of the downtown area, going for about 240,000. But they have the full kitchen, loft style, one bedroom tiny home. And there are waterfront being on the canal there. These are going for 239. And then I'd say the best value for a luxury two bed, two bath that I found is a recently reduced two bed, two bed, to recently reduced it to 565. Uh, it was closer to 600,000 before, but this is uh, offering up to 10 year financing as well. But this is just a really immaculate building, really fine finishes, uh, tons of really beautiful furniture within the, within the condo as well and comes fully furnished. So you can see here for a Caribbean front, two bed, two bath luxury on Ambergris Key. Uh, you are looking at about 565. So again, this is all just meant to give you some examples of what's going on in the market. There's a ton more available, obviously. You know, this is just a quick snapshot, but it's really to get you introduced to the, the different towns and the different neighborhoods. And then from there, feel free to reach out to us for specifics. All right, let's jump over to Key Cocker. This is that green pin, if you can follow right up here, that green pin, I like green pin. And this is the sister island to Ambergris Key. It takes about 30 minutes by ferry to go from Ambergris Key to Key Cocker. And it's only about 10 minutes by puddle jumper from Belize City and about one hour by water taxi again from Belize City. Population, you can see it's small. It's about 2000. And it's often referred to as what Ambergris Key was 25 years ago. So the roads here are still sand. There are not many golf carts here. It does because it's a lot smaller than Ambergris. It does tend to be more of a walking town. Um, people do tend to have this conception that it's not as discovered as Ambergris, so it's cheaper. It actually tends to be a little bit more expensive when it comes to real estate because there's just limited options. And there's also not that economy of scale because it's a, a smaller location compared to Ambergris, but it's a great place for people who just want quiet. And the mentality is go slow. That is their slogan for Key Cocker. So if that resonates with you, Key Cocker could be your spot. And if you are coming to the island here, I would highly recommend, write this down, this is awesome, going to a guana reef inn. They do stingray feedings at about 4.30 every day, and you're able to, to feed the stingrays and have them come right up to you. If you don't want to have them come up to you, you don't need to do that. You can just watch them from afar or from the dock, but it's really neat. And at this location here, Iguana Reef, they also have a little seahorse sanctuary, so you're able to see the seahorses. And then if you're on the island there, just enjoy a lazy day at the Lazy Lizard. This is at the split. Um, which is part of Key Cocker, and you're able to just enjoy, get in the water, relax, and really have that go slow mentality. All right, so a couple of examples for you. This is vacant land on the south side of Key Cocker. <clears throat> this is going for about $70,000. It's a standard um, 465 square meters, and that comes out to and feed about 50 by, uh, <coughs> excuse me, by 100 square feet. 
And this is located, as I mentioned, on the south side. So you can see that there are other homes there on the plot map. And it's not waterfront, it is about a five, 10 minute walk to the beach, but you are within more of a residential neighborhood. If you are looking for something that is already constructed, this is a great little opportunity that just entered the market recently. It's a beachfront, one bed, one bath. Uh, it is a little bit older, so you're not gonna have that modern finish to it, but it's going for 289. Has a kitchenette, has a, a, a bed, obviously. So you're able to enjoy uh, the water from the balcony. You can see it is in a very central location, really in the heart of the key Cocker town. So if you are somebody who's looking maybe from the rental perspective, put this in the rental, rental market, you can certainly do that or just kind of come and go as you please, you can certainly do that too. So one bed, one bath here going for 290,000. All right, let's jump to the Cayo district. This is that dark green pin that we see here close to the border. And Cayo is a place that is really near and dear to my heart. It's actually where I, I start to split my time between. Um, it is just such a completely different feel than Ehrenberger's Key. You do have the jungles and the rainforests and the, the, the waterfalls and the rivers. And I like, you know, I say it's the best of both worlds. You have the Caribbean and then you have the rainforest. And I was uh, in Kyle this past weekend and, and woke up, looked out the window and had these, those big green parrots right out of the window. And it's just really so unbelievable and fascinating. I still am so fascinated by the colorful birds of Belize and just birds of Belize generally, but it's there in the, in the Cayo district. And this district, it's about an hour and a half from Belize City to San Ignacio. San Ignacio is the primary big town there. Population of the entire district is about 100,000. And this is the area that really is well known for the rivers and the jungles and the Mennonites. I mentioned to you earlier that there's a big Mennonite population here in Belize. And so they do a lot of the farming and produce. Um, in addition to that, a lot of the woodworking and, and homes are fabricated here actually by the Mennonites. And this is a big area where we're seeing people are looking for off-grid living. So just something for you to uh, bear in mind. And the ATM caves, this is a must try if you're coming down, if you're adventurous, I say you do have to be adventurous for this one because as you can see in the picture there on the left, you are walking through caves with these headlights on. Otherwise it's pitch dark, walking through the water, climbing up rocks. There are actually Mayan artifacts in the ATM cave, which is fascinating that have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years, still preserved that you're still able to see within the cave. I think it's just absolutely fascinating. This I mentioned really, you do want to be a little bit more adventurous for it because you are climbing and swimming and, and going through um, caves, but there is a lesser version of this cave tubing, which you can just float down caves on an inner tube. It's not the ATM cave, it's a different cave. So if you're somebody who likes it a little bit more tranquil and relaxing, the cave tubing may be right for you. And then in addition to that, explore the farmer's market on Saturday. That's when they tend to have the most vendors, but actually the market is open seven days a week. So you are able to enjoy the market there. But you can see Mennonite there in the picture. They do run uh, a lot of the produce industry here. And it's important to note that fruit here is seasonal. So if you're used to having mangoes all the year round or avocados you, all year round, we don't have that here. We really have what's in season at that time, which actually is better for our health anyway. So uh, you do tend to find markets though throughout the entire country. A lot of a lot of fresh produce here is grown. So if you're looking for acreage or you're looking for a little bit more land, Cayo tends to be where people are going. Uh, this is an area here called Maya Spring. It is a, a smaller development of about 20 lots and they have lots starting at 74,000. That's for almost three acres. And then it goes up from there to over four acres for about 84,000. Uh, and there are some that are available with financing, others are just cash. But I do like to highlight this property here because it's in a really great spot, 20 minutes from San Ignacio, 20 minutes from Spanish Lookout. Spanish Lookout is the big Mennonite town. We're able to get all your fresh everything, but it is, uh, it is noteworthy for people who are looking for a little bit more acreage. And then if you are looking to live off grid and you want to be within a community, there is a tiny home that is available. This is such a cute, charming, tiny home. Uh, 145 is what it's going for. It has all the solar. It has the cistern. It has everything there already needed in order to move right in or to put it directly in the rental. The current owner puts in the rental program and it's doing really quite well for, with people who are renting as they're waiting for their homes there within the community to get completed. So just a great little spot, cute little spot and cozy as well. Very well laid out and very efficient. It does have that loft space upstairs if you are looking for just a little bit more storage. All right, pop quiz. All right, everybody, whoever is the first one to answer the Q&A first, 
um, is going to win that bottle of hot sauce there. And name one of the two top things to do that we mentioned to do in Kayo. So name one of the two top things mentioned to do in Kayo. All right, it looks like Jocelyn was the first one. I'm gonna just write your name here down, Jocelyn. And again, if I mentioned that you were the first one, please remember to email me your address, ATM Caves. Yes, awesome, very nicely done. So we mentioned in Kayo that one of the top or one of the top things to do is visit ATM Cave or to visit the, the Saturday Farmer's Market. So very nicely done. Thank you so much for all for your participation there. Really appreciate it, Jocelyn. You are gonna get that delicious bottle of hot sauce to your own. All right, so we have a couple more towns that we're going to highlight here. This is Hopkins. Hopkins is the one I mentioned to you that's about two, two and a half hours from the Belize City Airport. Population here is small. It's only about 2000 people, but it's really well known for the Garifuna population where they have really good lively music, really good food. Um, is coined also the friendliest town in Belize. But what I really like about Hopkins is the fact that it's close, it's right there on the coast, but it's also really close to a lot of great hiking sites and mountains, Bocoina National Park, Coxcomb Basin. If you're somebody who likes to go birding, really great for you to be here in Hopkins because you have the best of both worlds. Um, they do a lot of the cacao, cacao plantations here, a lot of cacao plantations for chocolate growing. And there's also one of the popular rivers throughout the country called the City River. If you are here in Hopkins, my top recommendations for you would be to do the Sunset River Boat Ride and Bioluminescence Tour with Happy Go Lucky Tours. I've done this tour many times at this point, and it is one of my favorite things that I've ever done in Belize. But you go down the City River in a small boat with a guide, and it's as the sun is starting to set. So you see all of the birds coming out and and this wildlife coming out and you end up in this lagoon and it's at the time that there's bioluminescence. So it's not all year round, but usually about February, March, April, June, you're able to find it. And you're actually able to jump into the lagoon with the bioluminescence around you. And so if you're not familiar with the bioluminescence, it's that little plankton that lights up. And so when you jump in, it's like this whole big, like light blue, bright blue that lights up around you. So it's all pitch dark otherwise, and you jump into the water and you see the bioluminescence. If you don't want to jump into the water, you don't have to. There's a paddle that you're able to see it, but it is just so incredibly fascinating. So there's really beautiful beaches there as well. And then there's also the close hiking spots where you're able to go to waterfall swimming spots right there from Hopkins. So this is an example of an off beach home that's going for 385. It's a three bed, two and a half bath on about a half an acre property. There are a lot of fruit trees already here. It is uh, a popular area too for, for, for growing, right? Gardens, I would say more so versus farmlands, but there is fertile soil here. This is a three bed, two and a half bath going for 385. This is not on the water, but within this community here, they do have river access. So if you do have a boat, you're able to, to bring your boat in. And then this is also on the Sydney River. There are seven lots that are available, each under 55,000. Um, about half or sorry, quarter acre each. And it's in its natural state right now. So it's not cleared. So you would have to clear it, but there is road access to this property here. So just some, some great options if you're looking to land bank. The City River is beautiful. This is the one where they have that bioluminescence tour going down. And it's just, it's just a stunning part of the country. All right. Last but not least, we're going to highlight Placencia and Maya Beach. Um, and as you can see here, that's a dark blue pin on the top left-hand side of the corner, top left-hand side of the, the page right here. And it's about three, three and a half hours from Belize City. Population is a little bit larger at about 5,000. This is a really popular spot for island hopping. There are a lot of beautiful islands around, diving, fishing, snorkeling. If you are looking to go fishing or snorkeling in the reef, do note that it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to get to the reef from Placencia because the reef is not as close as it is compared to Ambergris or Key Cocker, but it does also tend to be quieter than Ambergris Key. And here's my example of the must try. It's the Sunset Pontoon Ride with Sandy Cove Belize Tours. And I mentioned this is one of my favorite things to do there because the pontoon that they have, you can see there in the picture on the left, the pontoon that they have is made out of all natural hardwoods from Belize. And I just have never seen a pontoon like it before. It is immaculate. They use teak, they use mahogany. It is just a really, really stunning boat. And in addition to that, they give you a charcuterie board and some wine and drinks. And you're able to go throughout uh, Placencia, go down the canals and really watch the sunset. So it's really beautiful. 
So Island Hopping, I mentioned to you, and then enjoy the beach. And you can see there, the beach is a little bit different than it is on Ambergris Key. So you are able to, to swim right in. So if you are looking for ownership opportunities and you wanted to own your own island, there is King Louis Island Resort. So there are already rooms here and it's, and that was actually where this picture is. If you can see here on the left-hand side, this is King Louis Island. So ready for rentals. But this is going for 3.5 million. This is off the coast of Placencia. Another example is a single family home. This is on the beach going for about 600,000. Two bed, two bath. You can see the high vaulted ceilings, lots of natural hardwood integrated into the construction. But you can see out the picture on the right hand side that the beach is right there. Uh, typically, you are going to be paying more for water views or beachfront homes or properties. So again, just important for you to note as you're preparing your budget. All right, last poll here, then we'll dig into questions. And I'm just looking at the time. Yeah, we're, we're still in time. We still have about 10 more minutes. So what we'll do is get our next poll up here. And what area is the most interest to, to you? And that's, of course, so far, obviously, we just really barely touched the surface of places. I know a lot of you have, have been here before, so maybe you can answer that a little bit, a little bit more. Um, than folks who haven't, but I'll give you just another just another five seconds or so to uh, click your to click your option. All righty, four, three, two, and one. All right, we'll share our results here. So it looks like a majority, about half of the people, are looking at Ambergris Key. Awesome. Next, followed by Cayo. After that, Key Cocker, Placencia, Hopkins or Corazal then Hopkins. Okay, awesome, that's good. It's good to see. Again, happy to talk with folks about uh, any of the districts here. I've been through uh, most, if not all of them at this point quite thoroughly. So always happy to chat with you and really get a better understanding of, of what your goals are. All right, make sure we ended that. Okay, great. And we're gonna jump in now to a couple upcoming events. There's always questions about what there is to do on Ambergris Key or Belize generally. So this is coming up, what is today? The sixth on four days. If you're looking for an impromptu trip to Belize can, and you love mangoes, consider coming to the Hopkins Mango Festival. This is in, in the town of Hopkins and the mangoes are just in season now. They are so unbelievably delicious, but there is a whole festival dedicated to mango. So mango, everything is what you can expect. There's street, there's music, there's street festival. It's a lot of fun. Uh, in addition to that, Lobster Fest. So Lobster Fest this year is uh, starting July 1st and goes until the 16th. There's going to be Lobster Fest in San Pedro, Placencia, and Key Cocker. San Pedro has the longest Lobster Fest starting from July 3rd to the 16th. But for those of you who don't know, we have lob Lobster Season closes from the end of Fe from February through the end of June. So what that means is we don't have any lobster in the menu. So a lot of us love lobster here. And so when lobster season opens again, when we're able to go out and fish for lobster, bring it back in and eat them, there's a full celebration for it. So uh, depending on how much you like lobster and if you're planning to come down in the next few weeks, this could be a very fun time to do so. And then also in July, there's going to be the International Music and Food Festival. This is going to be in Belize City. And there's going to be a lot of great artists. They tend to be more of the reggaeton, soca music. Um, and also some Latino bands there. So it's uh, get a good feel for the type of music that we listen to here in Belize. Uh, if you want a schedule of what's coming up for the rest of the year, feel free to let us know and we can certainly send that over to you. Alrighty folks, so that brings us towards the end of the final presentation here. Uh, we do have time for questions and answers. I'm gonna go through as many as we can, but I would say if you are a new buyer to Belize, please do reach out for this guide. I've been here in the country for 11 years at this point have, have purchased real estate and have realized that initially when I was first purchasing, I just didn't know what I was doing, didn't really have anybody guiding me through it. And so I put together this guide that I found to be very helpful for people who are just starting through the real estate process. You have our email address there. Let us know if you want a copy of this, just email us directly. We can get this over to you and you're able to review it and do your due diligence. You doing your due diligence, being an educated buyer is the absolute best thing that you can do for your own protection, of course, but then also so you know what to expect as you're owning real estate here. And then also, if you do not already subscribe to us on YouTube, do that bottom left there, Luna Realty Belize, bottom right rather, Luna Realty Belize. We, I produce videos regularly, quick snippets, answer questions, um, go through the latest market updates, and you will find all of those there on YouTube. 
So with that, I'm gonna open up our questions and answers. Okay, so Alexi is saying, do we have to report back to the US IRS stating that we have property in Belize or if property is an Airbnb? Okay, great question. So I'm not an accountant, I'm not a CPA, but if you are a US citizen, you are obligated to report your income regardless of where in the world you make it. So you do have to fill out your, your forms. If you pay tax on it, it will just depend on your tax bracket, uh, but you do have to declare the income that's coming in. Depending on how you structure it, you may not have to declare if you have that property like specifically on a form. If it's in a company, like if you have it in a local company or an international business company, you will have to declare that company and then declare the assets within the company. If it's in your personal name, you don't have to declare the property per se, but you do have to declare the rental income regardless of how it's structured. So again, talk to your CPA or your accountant or attorney about that uh, because there are certain ways that people are structuring their investments and structuring their ownership just based on what is the best situation for them. All right, so let's go through some more questions. Cindy's saying, will you have access to the presentation? Will I have access to the presentation after? Yes, we are recording this and we'll email it out afterwards. All righty, seeing a lot of the answers here. So thank you. How much are the puddle jumpers or water taxis to Ambergris Key? So puddle jumper round trip from Belize City International Airport is about $160 US round trip per person. There is a municipal airport as well in Belize City. So the international airport, you get off your international flight, you walk through customs immigration, and then you can check in right there. That's about $160 US. However, if you are already in Belize and you're flying to Ambergris Key, you can go to the municipal airport and it's about $100 US round trip per person if you are flying to a municipal. But if you're flying in and out of Ambergris Key and directly to uh, your flight, your international flight, I would say it's best just to go back and forth to the international airport because that taxi that would take you from international to municipal is about $30 US anyway. So you wouldn't really be saving, saving money there. And then also the water taxi, it's about 60 to $70 US at this point per person round trip. And there are a couple of water taxi companies, Caribbean Sprinter, and then also San Pedro Water Express, I always get the name, San Pedro Express, uh, where you're able to, uh, to, to check out those as well to see their schedule. All right, Jamie is asking about golf opportunities. Okay, great question, Jamie, because there are not many golf opportunities at this point. There is a golf course on Belize mainland in Cayo called Roaring Creek. There is also an island out here called Key Chapel that was an island really dedicated to golf. Four Seasons purchased it fairly recently, I say fairly recently, about three, four years ago, um, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And they're gonna be building some residences out there and then also have people, you know, give people a chance to stay out there or go golfing on a day pass. Uh, it's not yet constructed. I know it's a slow start for them. So it uh, does not have an estimated completion date at this point, but I would say Cayo would be your best bet, but there really aren't many golf courses here. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, David is saying, what is the government structure? So here it's a democracy. So the terms, we have a prime minister here because it's a former Commonwealth, British Commonwealth. So we do have a prime minister. There are two primary parties, Red Party and Blue Party. Red Party is called the People United Party. And then the, and then the Blue Party, it, Blue Party is People United Party, Pup, and then the Red Party is UDP, United Democratic Party. And uh, so there are elections that happen every five years, but it is a democracy here. Luke is asking if we're selling any businesses. Yes, Luke, we sure are. Feel free to reach out to us and we can get you any details there. Paul is saying, really good question, Paul. How is the seaweed situation or the sargasm? So whew, February, end of February through March, there was a lot of sargasm here. It has definitely slowed down quite a bit. Um, and I know that there was that huge blob of sargasm that was supposed to be coming towards the Caribbean and Florida. And I actually just read an article uh, two or three days ago that that size, that blob has decreased by about 15% in size and they don't know how or why that happened, but it has. So we're hoping that it really isn't too bad for the rest of the year, but there is sargasm here and certainly not as bad as it was the end of February, March. A lot of beaches do have cleanup crews, especially if it's a resort, they'll have a cleanup crew that is removing the sargasm and can actually do quite a bit with it. Landfill is one of the big ones 
that is, is being used for. I've seen roads actually where they're just starting out, they'll lay it down in order to create some more fill there. So there is certainly use for it, but uh, we do get some like certain times of the year it just seems to be worse than others. And there is no real telling with mother nature when that's going to be. But at this point, uh, it is quite clear. Latanya, oh, hello. She's saying, is it true that I can get dual citizenship after living five years in Belize? Okay, great question. So in Belize, there are a couple of different residency options. So residency is essentially like a green card. And one of the most popular is the permanent residency. You obtain permanent residency after living here for a full year. Within that full year, you can only leave up to two weeks, 14 days, but the rest of the time you're here in the country. After that year is fulfilled, then you can apply for your permanent residency. After you've had your permanent residency for five years, then you can apply to be a citizen of Belize. Now, you really do need to be living here in order to make that happen. I know some people um, want, are looking for passports through economic means which they just don't have that here. Here it's time, it's typically time or money when it comes to a passport. Here it's time, so you have to spend five years here after getting your permanent residency. And then typically it takes about two to three years to get your citizenship after you've applied for it. Uh, the other option for residency, it's called the QRP, Qualified Retired Persons Program. It's an annual renewal, it's for people 45 years or older who are really coming down here to retire. So you're not operating a business, you're not buying a business, you're not working. It really is geared towards people who want to retire here. This is a popular option for people who like to bring down a lot of stuff with them because you can bring in a container uh, duty-free. You can also bring in a vehicle duty-free every five years. So there are some nice benefits to it, but do you know you have to renew it every year? Otherwise, you'll be subject to the, the taxes uh, that you, of the items that you brought in. And then the other residency here, it is... A invest, it's an investor residency. You have to invest at least $250,000 cash into the country. And then from there, you're able to apply for your investor residency. But both the QRP and the investor residency do not lead to citizenship, only that permanent residency does. So you really have to be here for that first year, for a full year, up to 14 days you can leave, but for that first year, which oof, I've done a lot of research on residency programs in my my past job, we uh, were an international real estate development company. So we did a lot with especially the Central and Latin American countries for people who are looking for residencies. And Belize, I have to say, is one of by far one of the easiest requirements when it comes to residency of only being here for a year. Now, obviously, if you're not planning to be here for a year, it's a little bit more challenging. But for those of you who can make that time commitment, I'd say it's one of the easiest. And then I see TJ there. I know we just started tapping into the retiree program, but yes, there is the Qualified Retired Persons Program. Feel free to reach out to me, TJ. We have a session that we did with an attorney about the different residencies here in Belize. Happy to send you over that recording so you can learn more about it. Um, okay, this is Robert Sway. Hi, Celeste. I hear so many horror stories about short-term rentals. How are these handled? Damaged property and renters not leaving. Okay, great question. So here in Belize, it's actually very landlord friendly. Um, you are able to kick out a tenant at any point. All you have to do is get the police to come and evict them. So they are able to leave. There are also no squatter laws here. So even if somebody has been living on your property for 15, 20 years, they cannot claim it as their own, as long as you're able to show that you are the titled owner to it. So I think for short-term rentals, it really just depends entirely on the rental management company that you have. Um, it, you want to do a ton of due diligence and homework, get referrals, get references for those short-term rental companies, look for the companies that have been operating for a while because they have the experience of having the long-term or nightly rental here. I'd say that in Belize, I mean, Belize, the Belize Tourism Board has done a pretty good job at regulating rental companies here. Like if it's a condo development, they're only, they're obligated to have one rental management company for the entire property for nightly rentals. So it's a lot more organized previously that was never really enforced. It is now. And I think that that just helps it with nightly rentals to be a lot cleaner, to have everybody on the same page, but it's like it anywhere in the world. Um, you know, you got to just do your homework when it comes to rental management companies. And, you know, if you meet somebody in the bar and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, don't worry, I can, I can manage your house for you when you're not here. Then, you know, next thing you know, you have a check-in, but then they get invited to go on a boat for a birthday party. You can best believe they're going on that boat to the birthday party and they are not going to be there for the check-in of your owner so, or for your guests. So you just need to make sure that you're working with a reputable company, but that comes with you know, questions like how long have you been in this industry? 
you know, how many homes are you managing? Can you send me example performas uh, just to get all that? And then also pop down for surprise visits every now and again. That's not a, a bad way to write off a business expense. Uh, Cindy, my office is in San Pedro here. And I'm around the country though quite a bit. So just feel free to email me. Let me know when you're coming down and uh, we can certainly meet up. And then Latanya is saying, can you explain about the tax-free cargo container per person? Okay, yes, that is in reference to the QRP, Qualified Retired Persons Program. If you are coming in, you have your QRP, you're able to bring in a container load of items, duty-free, customs-free. And that is a huge savings here because duties can range anywhere from 30 to 100% of the value of that item. You can also bring in a vehicle every five years. So it's just, you do need to maintain the residency though. It's annual renewal and you do need to maintain it. But, uh, you know, sometimes people bring in everything that they have. Other times people just sell what they have or get a storage container in their home country to store their stuff while they move here. I would say best bet is to come down. A lot of the houses also come fully, fully furnished. And so, you know, you don't necessarily need to bring all this stuff down with you, but always assess it. You know, some people like their personal stuff, totally get it. And so having that container loaded of items makes sense. Um, anonymous attendees saying, are the marine, are there marinas where you can rent boat slips? Uh, depends where in the country you're talking about. Most coastal towns do have some sort of a marina. Here in Amber Grist Key, we do have a boat yard that you're able to rent slips here. Uh, so certainly possible to, uh, to do so. And I see we're getting a lot of questions coming in and we are oh, beyond our hour here and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So what we're going to do guys, if I haven't answered your question, feel free to email me there info at lunarealtybelize.com. I'd love to get it answered for you. And again, if you have any questions, generally, if you couldn't think of the right questions to ask or any questions to ask in this session or more questions you have, again, email me there. I'd love to, to hear from you, hear what's on your mind and go from there. I want to thank everybody for making it this far in the session. I appreciate it. I know we're close to uh, close to 70 minutes here. So I appreciate you all staying tuned in with us, but looking forward to hearing from you, hopefully seeing you here in Belize at some point. And we will go from there, everyone. Again, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in person. Bye-bye.